Between the years of 1941 and 1945, Robert Oppenheimer began production of what was known at the time as the Manhattan Project, the construction of a weapon that would create a fission reaction and have catastrophic effects. During this time, wartime allies, the Soviet Union, were wary of the United States' actions and sent Klaus Fuchs and Theodore Hall to spy on any activity that might be considered suspicious. What they uncovered was the Manhattan Project. Stalin was informed of the project before Theodore Roosevelt's death. President Truman was, in fact, unknowing of the project up until his presidency. When he told Stalin of the atomic bomb at the Potsdam Conference, he had no idea that the Soviet Union and Stalin had known about the bomb before he had. The atomic bomb was first utilized on August 6, 1945, when the bomb codenamed Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. Three days later, President Truman gave the order to drop the bomb codenamed Fat Man on Nagasaki. The world was shocked. Oppenheimer resigned after the dropping of both bombs, having said, Now I have become death, destroyer of worlds. Many things changed in the world after that. The country of Japan was crippled, the balance of power had been disturbed, and the USSR had opened its eyes in regards to developing nuclear weapons. The United States estimated that the USSR would not have a nuclear weapons program up and running until the later half of the 1950s. This was based on the belief that there was a scarcity of uranium in the world and that the United States had the monopoly on that. However, thanks to research gathered by spies and new resources coming in from satellite states, the USSR got a bomb a decade sooner than anticipated. RDS-1, or Joe-1, as codenamed by the United States, was detonated by the USSR in Semipalatinsk, Kazakhstan. For the second time in four years, the balance of power was again disturbed in the world, and a global panic ensued. The United States and the Soviet Union would spend the coming years stockpiling weapons and resources in an effort for both countries to be more prepared than the other. Developments of a hydrogen-enriched bomb began in 1951. In November of that year, the United States detonated the first of these but was responded with four years later with Russia's true hydrogen bomb. At this point in time, espionage was not working for the USSR, and so domestic research began on such new developments. During this time, the goal was to fire nukes from the respective countries that would be able to reach the other nations, and thus the research into intercontinental ballistic missiles started. With the launch of the satellite Sputnik in 1950, it proved to the United States that the USSR could launch a missile that could hit anywhere in the world. This would start the era known as the Space Race. By the late 1950s, a growing tension between the two nations was forming due to the idea that either nation could destroy the other at will and still have enough firepower left to destroy the other. Thus the idea of mutually assured destruction was conceived. This period spawned a lot of social changes in the respective countries. The United States started the campaign of the Red Scourge. We will examine the effects on the atmosphere of nuclear detonations at 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and 250 kilometers altitude. In another view, a high-velocity shock wave is seen to race outward from the radiation front, which is still at a temperature on the order of 10,000 degrees. The cooling fireball and debris mixture, no longer luminous, continues to rise and expand, reaching a diameter of about 40 kilometers at one minute. Videos in schools across North America 
instructed children to duck and cover in case of a nuclear attack. There was a turtle by the name of Bert, and the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He ducked and cover, ducked and cover. The Soviet Union responded by attacking the United States' way of life and putting up propaganda against capitalist ideals. Nikita Khrushchev's succession of Stalin in 1953 showed much promise for a move towards peace between the two nations. Khrushchev's peaceful coexistence doctrine was, however, rejected by the United States and forced the USSR to continue to stockpile weapons in fear of being bombed. During this period, Britain, China, and France would all start nuclear programs of their own. Though many of their weapons were stronger than the initial bombs dropped on Japan, the United States was beginning to move from kiloton bombs to megaton bombs. Castle Bravo would prove to be the most powerful nuclear weapon the United States would ever detonate. It was detonated on March 1, 1954, and wielded 15 megatons of power. The thermonuclear ability of the bomb made it much more powerful than most conventional bombs at this time. However, the USSR was developing a megaton bomb of their own, codenamed the Tsar Bomba, King Bomb. It was a nuclear weapon that held 100 megatons of power. However, due to the impracticality of the bomb's production and size, it was reduced to half the explosive effect. The results were still gargantuan. Tsar Bomba would be the second most destructive force unleashed onto the earth, next to Rent. The production of nuclear weapons were a major hit to both economies. Both had focused so much time and resources towards their projects that their economic situations were beginning to feel the heat. The United States moved from an anti-Soviet movement to a peace and disarmament movement. This would lead to both nations starting an era known as the Détente. During this period, many treaties were signed to stop the production of new nuclear weapons. However, the goals of the treaties were only partially successful due to the control maintained by both superpowers in space. Where the treaty succeeded in limiting production would fail when it came to disarmament. During this period, India and Pakistan would enter their own arms race. India would start in 1974 by launching the Smiling Buddha and Pakistan in 1998. Like many things during that year, the arms race ended in 1991 with the collapse of the Soviet Union and mass disarmament occurred around the world.